Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a corset from jeans or any other thicker, not as stretchy material. You can download the pattern that I use for this top for free in my description. This corset uses panels and it's good for denim or fabric that's not like super stretchy. But if you have stretchy material or you want to preserve a pattern on like a t-shirt or whatever fabric you have, I would suggest this other video that I made. I'll put the link to this in this description as well and in this video I also have the free pattern in that description. So in this video I'm showing you how I made this denim top. I wore it to brunch. I loved it but everyone kept telling me I look like Britney Spears from the 2000s but whatever it's still cute. So I use these jeans to make this top but you can really use any denim like fabric. You can download the exact pattern that I used for free 99 in the bio don't worry guys i got you but in case you guys need to make some adjustments to my pattern i'm showing you here kind of how i made the measurements for it and designed it so i first start off by taking the measurement like around my body and dividing it into how far i want the straps to be from each other divided by two how long i want the top to be how wide i want that dip to be and divided by two how far I want the front and the back strap to be from each other. So then I got this general shape, I cut it out, and then I cut straight down the front and on the sides, you kind of want to think about where your body curves. So here you're just going to fold it in half and make that curve there and that curve just helps it like fit into your sides. First, I'm going to take apart the jeans so I have a nice flat piece to cut my patterns out with. So the way I do this pattern, if you printed it out, you'll see that I label all the panels. So I have six panels and there's a side one and a side two. So I'm going to cut the shape out, but I'm adding the seam allowance around it. And you'll see in the pattern too, like where to how much seam allowance to add for each side so the top and the bottom I usually put like a half inch the one side I put like a fourth and the other side I put like probably about an inch or so and then I'm going to flip it over and cut out the same exact piece so once I have my two pieces I'm going to trace that pattern piece around it and that's why I don't add seam allowance to my pattern piece because I want to be able to trace it on the fabric which you'll see why that comes in handy later and I'll also uh, label each piece um so for instance the one I'm marking now I'll put six for the six panel and two for side two so I just make two piles and by the way I'm using washable markers so all these marks that I make them will literally come out super easy with water I'll try to find the link to these markers and put them in the description so again I'm just cutting out panel 5 now and you'll see on that one side I have more seam allowance than the other and this is um where we're gonna make the channel for the boning so I'm just gonna finish all those panels cut them out and then I'm going to put them in order so you know one two three four five six and you'll see my one is a little thin because I was running out of fabric but I'll make it work so now I pin the panel pieces together and I do this by taking two pieces putting them together and just pinning them trying to get them the pin through the line on both sides and at first, this might seem kind of hard, but I promise you, after you do a couple, you'll probably get it on the first try. So, as you can see here, just kind of put them together while keeping them in order. Um, that's the best way to do it. And I'm pinning the small seam allowance side of one panel to the other bigger seam allowance side. I hope that makes sense, but if it doesn't, just try to watch this and you know do what I do so now I'm just gonna use a straight stitch and go all the way down 
these panels where I pinned um sewing like on that line and I sew like the whole side so even where I didn't like make a mark just sew like down that whole side so for the middle piece where you're putting the two pieces together we don't have like a a side where there's like an extra seam around so I just do a straight stitch and connect them here I'm just snipping all the little extra thread parts so now with these flaps that we got from adding that extra seam allowance to one of the sides, I'm just going to fold and tuck it over and pin it down. And if you're using boning, you want to make sure that you pin them wide enough so that your boning will still fit through. I'm going to put the link in the bio to the boning that I use. I highly, highly recommend this boning. It's sewable. It's affordable. It is the best. For this part in the middle, I like to hem it so it doesn't fray and then sew it down with a straight stitch. For all the channels that I pin, I'm going to go over them with a straight stitch. Once that's done, I'm just going to trim the bottom to make it clean. And I always suggest folding your, this project or any project you're working on in half to make sure that both sides are even. Next I'm going to hem the bottom so it doesn't fray. Then for the bottom I'm going to fold it in about a quarter inch and pin it. And now I'm going to sew that down with a straight stitch. So now it's time to add the boning so I use this boning which I'll put a link in the description for. And I use a nail file to file the edges so they're not super sharp. But I pretty much just line the boning up on the shirt, figure out how long I need the piece to be. And I don't want it to go up all the way because I am going to trim and fold over that top part. So I usually trim it like an inch below the top of the top, as you can see. And then I just make sure that the one side is even with the other side, file the edges and just put it in there. This boning is really good because it's sewable so you don't have to worry about you accidentally sewing over it and it breaking your needle. You can also uh, put it in the washer and dryer with no problem. If you don't have boning, you can always use wire ties but I just don't really know how they will hold up especially in the dryer or something like that but it's still a good option if you don't have boning. So now I'm just going to fold over the top and trim the edges and really here you can just kind of make the top of the corset however you want it to be. Like if you don't, if you want it to be strapless, if you want the neckline different, just cut it how you want. But this is the shape that I always go for. So again, I'm just trimming it. I like to pin the boning channels on each side together so that I know it's laying flat and even. And once I have that done and cleaned up, I'm going to go over it with a hem stitch and then fold it over about a quarter inch like how I did the bottom and then go over that with the straight stitch. Here I had one back piece that was wider than the other one so I just took out the pins and fixed it so that they were the same width because if not when I go to lace it up it'll, it'll look weird having one side look wider than the other. Again, I'm just straight stitching the top. So now it's time to do the part where we add the grommets so that the back will lace up. So I just fold it over and then fold it over again. That way it doesn't fray. And then I'm going to pin it down. So I'm going to use a straight stitch and sew around this rectangle, but I'm going to leave the top part open. And you'll also see me put a straight stitch um, about a fourth of an inch or so, however wide your boning is, from one of the lines. And this is so the back piece will have some support 
like here in the next picture you'll see I didn't put boning in this one so you can see how it's kind of like wavy it doesn't fit flat on the back so I just add that boning there and then close it with the straight stitch on the top in order to have something to put the straps through I use these little deviants I got off of Amazon which I'll put the link in the description for So the four little pointy parts of the fabric, I just put the D-ring in there, fold the fabric over, <clears throat> and go over it with the straight stitch. And if you do use these, I do suggest maybe trying to hand sew it because I did break a needle trying to sew this because it hit the ring. So make sure you don't get it too close and break your needle as well. You don't have to use these rings. You can also just sew the strap right onto the corset or make it strapless. So this is the grommet kit that I used for the back lace up part. I'll put a link to this kit in my description. I first take a washable marker and mark the top and the bottom where I want the grommets to go and then I just evenly space out where I want the other grommets to go. Once it looks nice and even I just fold it over and match the dots onto the other side as well. Then use a little seam ripper and put a tiny, tiny hole into the corset and cut it out a little bit with scissors. There's a lot of videos online on how to use garments and the kit also comes with a little picture tutorial. But pretty much you're going to need a hammer and I like to do it on a hard surface so I have this piece of wood. I just put the little grommet holder down, put a grommet on top, push down the fabric around the grommet. And then use one of the little circle pieces to place on top. And then with the tool that comes in the kit, you just put it on top and hammer it down. If you don't want to use grommets, you can always just use anything else um, to lace up the back. Maybe make some loops, maybe add a zipper instead, something like that. Here I'm just lacing up the back with the shoestring. And then I'm just going to lace up the straps that go over my shoulders. And then the front I like to make a little bow. So I put one in the ring one way and one end in the other way. That way I can make a knot and make a cute little bow. This was the final result. I always have so much extra denim and I love making these corsets out of the denim. This is another corset that I made with the same pattern. I wore it out the next day and it was so cute. If you want to see more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram at Devilish Angel. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave them down below. And if you guys have any suggestions on tutorials you would like to see me make, just let me know as well. Thanks for watching.